Hi everybody, welcome back to Fresh Outlook. I'm TWB. We're in the middle of a spirited debate about urban violence and finding solutions. Uh, this We could talk all day about this. Um, so let's continue the conversation. Uh, just a couple stats. You know, the New York Times article that everyone's talking about, sort of the latest violence in Chicago. Talk about a state uh, with no civilian gun ranges, bans on both assault weapons and high capacity magazines, and yet uh, they've had more than 500 homicides last year. 40 killings alone in January of uh, 2013. So obviously, uh, you know, gun rights advocates could say look look at all these exactly. laws in place there's and there's still uh, you know then the place is still not safe so Didi what do you what do you think exactly the wrong thing to do exactly I mean, we mm -hmm. have to have guns we have to have safety we have to have law and order without law and order everything falls apart and that's what's happened in these cities I mean you know and the, truly we have to have good police force and what you were talking about actually with the schools getting involved absolutely but you have to double down on that otherwise it's total chaos right Bashir what do you, what do you think you agree I, total I, chaos I what do you think about the gun, the gun control advocate argument well you know the, the I think we're missing a big point and you know when we talk about gun control and talk about urban uh, urban violence we are not I mean we're not talking with the young people we are looking from outside the box and saying what these young people need that we need law and order. We need everything to be under control. But that, that sounds like an argument from outside of the box. If you were to spend time within these communities and ask them what's going on, they would tell you that they are in classrooms where teachers are culturally incompetent. They are in communities where police officers are culturally incompetent. You have teachers who don't come from where they come from, police officers who don't come from where they come so, from. But Sharon, so what's the solution? What, what, what kinds of things are you doing with your foundation to combat what you just, just spoke of? I think the first solution is to stop thinking that we have all the solutions and to sit and listen. You know, I, something changed my life the other day. You know, I was in one of my classrooms and the young people, you will be surprised how many young people are dealing with suicidal thoughts and suicidal mm. attempts. We, we are skipping mental health. You know, poverty causes mental health issues. There's a lot of mental health issues within our community that we're not talking about. So we have to go into the community and not think that we have the solutions, but to sit down. And that's what my foundation does. We are in the classrooms all across this country. And we're not saying, hey, we have all the answers. We're saying, let's come up with the answers and solutions together. Because when everyone is involved in that, then everyone has a responsibility to right. ensure these but you solutions. Know, you could say, though, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Uh, but sure, you're saying the teachers are out of touch, the police officers are out of touch. So what's the solution? We have to hire uh, teachers that are that are in touch, so to speak. I mean, and what is that process like? I mean, so I think that I, I, point well, is, I, is not very uh, is not a very tangible point or something that's easily solved. Well, one Didi of my, or Bill, yeah, you guys take it out. Who gets to talk? <laughs> now? Go ahead. My, Ready? Go. <laughs> Didi, Bill. Didi, Bill. <laughs> One of my former uh, bosses, the Labor Secretary Bob Rice, used to talk about how you know we as Americans and business people and all Americans we need to treat our people as assets to be developed. And basically, I, what Bashir is telling you is that you know not only with uh, uh, taking on these strategies that increase the number of police on the police uh, in the communities and and also making sure that they're connecting better with with people in the communities, that we also have to take a step look back and. To ask, we're not in, but we haven't invested in these in these educational uh, in the education of many of these young people so and, and the their parents. So that's the big problem. Well, it's education, it's job opportunities, yeah. uh, it's you know now. But if we were going to uh, start one place specifically, well, where, where it's the first place to start? One good example, uh, I like the work of Jeffrey Canada um, of yes. the uh, Harvard Ch uh, Children's Zone um, uh, d does, uh, where they basically have ta had the strategy of taking back a block by block within Har parts of Harlem, mm. and what they've done instead of one silver bullet, whether it be policing or whether it be um, and improving educational opportunities, they've taken, a, what you have to do, they've taken a holistic approach in terms of trying to first make sure that we provide uh, preschool, mm -hmm. added quality preschool uh, experiences for children, that we are providing an opportunity for places, for a safe place for kids to be after school, whether they're in after school programs, that we're doing, they've been experimenting and work with uh, parenting programs. Uh, there's well, just been a whole host. You're talking about education, and that's great, but if you don't have a safe place, nobody's going to want to be educated. But, they're all going to well, leave. But what did I just say? But what houses, I have, but before I preface my remarks, though, first, but so Didi, before you can I have a safe school. But Didi, before I pref before I went into those human 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 investment human priority investments, I 
acknowledged your point that you also have to have. We definitely have to yeah. have education too, but the point here but now you, is about urban violence. Right. Yeah. John, what do you yeah. think? Yeah. Well, well, there's the a couple other issues too. Uh, you know, uh, Wait, Bashir, hang on one second. John. Oh, dysfunctional families. In other words, it really starts, we said, where does it start? It starts in the family, you know. So uh, if one parent is in prison or mm -hmm. not there or not even married or whatever, then you're lacking the supervision at home or sure. whatever. One of the alarming things I found out, I thought I knew a lot about criminal justice until I got on the state parole board. I interviewed thousands of inmates coming up for parole. And a number of them had seven or eight children with three or four different women. And what I kept thinking about, mm -hmm. bad enough that this is moralistic, not the good thing, what chance do these kids have? The father's in prison. Yeah. Uh, there is, you know. I mean, it's from uh, day one. Yes. Well, so right off the right. bat, you're starting off behind the block. Okay, now right. all the other things are important. Yeah. And school, that's where they spend most of the day. So that's very important too. But I'll tell you an interesting project after school thing that they started in Somerset County a number of years ago, Twilight Program. The kids that dropped out of school and more, couldn't make it in the traditional school setting, they opened up the vocational school from five o'clock till 7.30 at night, small classes, two or three instructors for five or six kids, trying to get them interested in some vocational thing. Mm -hmm. They had quite a bit of success. That program has been replicated in a number of other states. So it's not just the traditional education. You've got to come up with alternatives, and a number of cities have. Right. Uh, and you also have to look at what's appropriate for your particular sure, area, right. region, Sure, right, it's case-by-case case basis. Yeah. Uh, Bashir, I want to bring you back in. Um, tell us a little bit about some of uh, your solutions, the foundation you have, uh, and the work you've done with kids to, uh, to move this effort forward. Yes, I, you know, this is a, a very great point the gentleman made. I think it's very important. You know, what we've been focusing on is community. You know, I believe that if we can, we have a program called Be Well, for example, where we bring families together and we teach them how to cook healthy meals. We bring a chef in and we spend 10 weeks with this family and teach them how to cook healthy meals. Not only health in regards of the food that they eat, but even bringing the family together so that they can eat with one another. You know, we... When you talk about urban violence, we have to understand that it starts with inside the home. What, what was just said is so important. You have young people who are doomed before they even are born. Mm -hmm. They are coming into situations where their father is not there or the father is in jail. There's no job. So you can add more police officers, but if you don't change the condition, it will always remain the same. So more programming is very important. Uh, more job opportunities. Yeah, I think we can all agree on that. It mm, starts in the home, but again, yeah. how realistic is that? I mean, it's very realistic. Well, is there, it? We are doing it every day. Yeah. We're is doing it, it every okay. day. Lives yeah. are being changed every day. Yeah. Believe me, it's realistic. Well, we it's need more foundations and, like yours, uh, and, uh, and, and Bashir, yeah, and, and more Jeffrey, advocates. And, and, and Jeffrey, across and Jeffrey the country that are doing the same work that are bigger and better than mine. But what I'm what I'm saying to us is that we have to be consistent with inside the community and showing our young people and the people people that we're not deeming them animals and saying that they are criminals and no it's a it's a it's a condition that is caused it's a cause to this effect and if we can't focus on the cause we will never change the effect. We won't right. ever change. Uh, again, I just, like you said, there are, I mean, we just need more of it. Whatever you're doing, uh, Bashir, we need more of it. We need to intensify it. Uh, I need to do better. But I, I need to do a lot more, really. But uh, it, it's. Well, I'm just saying you, but I'm saying in general. We all have to. This is a We love what you're doing. We, we want to multiply uh, it by like 15,000. You know, just John? in addition to what he's saying is, and, you know, we have all the counselors and professional people and all that, but another technique that some places have been using is uh, the inmate who uh, came out of prison made a satisfactory adjustment and a number of them have and are successful business people have them coming back as mentors uh, and yeah. they can relate with them uh, ex-gang members or whatever so there are some programs like that in New Jersey you have Project Pride where inmates who are in prison and are almost up for parole uh, they come and talk at high schools uh, I bring them into college classes just for an informational kind of thing uh, and they talk about how they've they're turning their lives around or whatever so again they see somebody from their own areas neighborhoods and you know so it's not just that Professional mm -hmm. certified, you yeah. know. The other thing yeah, I yeah, wanted but, to bring, go but, ahead. But but, you, but there are I think some other a menu of other things that we can do. I mean, one there's been a you know a big uh, push to what's called ban the box, right? And that is on employment applications that you know you have to answer whether or not you've been uh, right. you know you've been convicted of a crime. Okay. And that just but if you say yes to that, there are many jobs, especially now in the world of homes, homeland security. We did some work on trying to provide opportunity mm -hmm. at the, the port up in New York. And so New that Jersey box port. should be eliminated. Well, you need to come up with some, maybe eliminated, or you got to come up with some ways to where you just don't basically. No off. way! Companies you, well, should know if someone's committed I'm a crime. I'm not saying you don't. No, no, let me back up again. I'm not. You're overreacting or jumping. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying I that like you. Overreacting. You know, again, back to my point. We <laughs> have to have everybody needs to have good information, transparent information. Right. But 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 we got to point. We're creating such a back a cost. 
to these communities, to these individuals, to these families by basically disqualifying them from a lot of basic yeah. work. The other, exactly. And the other thing that, that I've been doing uh, with the state is they've at, that every four years states have to re-look at their child support obligation uh, okay. approaches. That is important. And uh, one of the things that we, right. we recommended to the committee was that they raise what's called the self-support threshold. Mm -hmm. And that is that if the non-custodial parent, which in this case is mainly, mainly men, if it falls below the poverty rate, they then um, uh, will still have to pay, a, pay an amount, but not the prescribed right. amount. And so the idea, and to summarize, really is to separate the deadbeat dads yes. the, from the dead broke dads. Mm -hmm. Right. For those who yeah. want we to are at a time, we have a couple seconds okay. from everybody to just get a couple <laughs> last final thoughts very quickly. Well, I just wanted to uh, say John, on, on the record thing, I mean, they do have an alternative if you had a prior record. You can apply to seal your records or expungement after a certain amount of time, and in essence, that reflects no record or whatever. So again, if you're a convicted person and you met that time requirement, some years it's, or some states it's three years, some states it's five. You can apply for expungement, seal your records, uh, and then that would cover the person who sure. you know doesn't want that on the record. Okay. But uh, anyway. Didi, final bottom thoughts? line, you got to keep the kids safe, the school uh, safe, the streets safe, so you can have a good community and break down the violence. Okay. Uh, and uh, Bashir, final thoughts. You know, within inside the high school that I go to, there are more police officers than nurses. What environment are we creating for our young people? And I think that the true definition of success is us going back and reminding them that the true definition of success is truly is truly making a change within the community and that's what my mission is and i believe that's what our mission should be thank you so Great. much thank you bashir i want to uh, thank you uh, head of the bashir jones foundation something uh, my final thought something we didn't get to talk to talk about rather uh this no snitch code in chicago which a lot of people say is the number one reason why uh you know we, we can't get this under control people are afraid to talk to local police so the question is should obama sort of mention it and maybe I don't know, maybe there should be federal money for witness protection or some sort of safekeeping program where I shouldn't, you know, feel stifled that I want to, you know, so, so, quote unquote, snitch on someone. But that's another topic yeah, and we okay. don't have time. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> when we return to Fresh Outlook, we're going to get into something we do have time for. That is China's cyber, cyber attack on the U.S. and this extremely serious security threat we now face, although some people say it's not so serious. We'll talk about it next on Fresh Outlook. Stay with us.